Welcome to Retiring Well, where we are here to help you plan to retire well. We've compiled a great show this week. We have four very interesting topics that we hope you can gather a little bit of information from to help continue your, that retirement dream for you. Nick is gonna start out the show talking about statistics, and not just any statistics. This is one of the statistics you don't wanna be part of, so avoiding becoming a statistic in retirement. Then, Social Security and taxation. Boy, sometimes it really grinds people to think they have to pay tax on their Social Security. We're gonna be talking about maybe how to look at minimizing that tax over your lifetime that you'll pay on your Social Security. Then, how to invest $100,000 towards retirement. What are some tools available out there? How to do that efficiently and the best way to meet your goals in retirement. And to wrap up the show, I'm gonna be talking about how to retire early. Sometimes it's a dream for many people to have that retirement early and walk away from that career and do all the things that you wanna do. What are some things to consider to help you set up that as a most possible way to do that and so you can be successful in your retirement years? We're gonna be talking about this and so much more this week here on Retiring Well. Retiring Well, brought to you by Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors, specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan. Retiring well, helping you plan for a successful and comfortable retirement. Retiring well, plan to retire well. Every once in a while, we stumble across um, some statistics. And you know, this recent one that I came across, and it was kind of a survey that compiled a bunch of statistics, uh, came from the Fed. And really, it was very interesting because it outlined six unpleasant statistics for retirees. And so I kind of want to go over those with you today to, to inform you on them and then also kind of try to help you avoid being one of those statistics. So first, uh, number one, um, and this is more just background information for you, um, but it, it was covering the average Social Security benefit. Um, so the average Social Security benefit for 2023 amounted to about 22 thousand dollars per year um, so I want you to think about that you know if you're approaching retirement or maybe you've got you know a few years out before retirement you know a lot of people think that Social Security should be a huge part of your retirement plan well think about it can you can you make twenty two thousand dollars a year work for your situation for a lot of people that's just not enough right so you can't solely live on Social Security alone. So you gotta have something else, right? Well, number two, um, more than one in four working adults are not contributing to retirement accounts. Isn't that just crazy? So the, the actual stat was 28% of those working adults aren't saving for retirement, don't have that retirement account. But what really blew my mind, and this is number three, is that nearly 50% of millennials, and get this, 92% of Gen Zers don't have a retirement account whatsoever. Okay, isn't that just wild? Now, the, the Fed did do um, kind of an explanation there on reasons why um, these generations aren't really saving for retirement. And the big one, the first one is those rising costs. Okay, obviously with inflation being so high, everything is costing more. And for the, the younger folks, having the extra dollar to put away in the retirement accounts is, is uh, very hard to come by, right? Another one is these younger um, couples, well, they're, they're having children, right? So the added cost um, to, to bring a child into the world doesn't allow for a lot in, in savings. Um, but I would encourage you, if I mean, even if it's $50 a month, something that you think is way too small to even make a difference, well, just get started because I think that's oftentimes the first hurdle is just getting started, just getting invested. And so I encourage you, stash away whatever you can because the earlier you start, the magic of compounding interest is just unbelievable. If you can continue to do that year over year over year for 20, 30, 40 years until you retire, you'd be really surprised at what you actually have when you retire. 
Um, number four, 38% of Americans um, are not in the stock market, which I thought that was very interesting as well. I mean, yes, it, it can be very volatile, but when you go back and look at history, um, for an example, the S&P 500, you go back 95 years, the, if you average the annualized rate of return, it amounts to 11 and a half percent. So yeah, one of the main concerns is the volatility, but typically that's just short term in the market. So you should be investing in the market, but for the long term. And hopefully in the long run, you'll end up ahead. Um, number five, nearly 70% of Americans aren't on track with retirement. Isn't that just, just crazy, that number? 70%. Now, what they did find was that as you increase in age, um, those stats kind of change a little bit. So those over 60 do feel a lot better about their retirement compared to the younger generations. So kind of self-explanatory there. And then number six, many retirees without private income report struggling financially. So this is, hey, we've got so many people, about 53% that are living just on Social Security alone. Now, they might be working, they have a job or so forth, but if you don't have that extra income, whether it be from a retirement account, a part-time job, or a pension, living on Social Security alone can be very, very difficult. So I encourage you, plan for retirement, right? Get things in place, start investing, and work on different income sources so that you can plan to retire well. Make the most of Social Security. Although Social Security isn't designed to cover all of your income needs, it's an important part of the retirement puzzle. Download our free booklet on the Social Security decisions at sin-wealth.com and learn how to optimize Social Security for your situation. Why timing is so important when it comes to your benefits. Ways to supplement your Social Security and more. There is no cost and no obligation. Simply go to sin-wealth.com, scroll down and click the download link to get your free booklet on the Social Security decisions. As you are planning for retirement, where's your journey taking you? Do you know where you are going? How are you going to get there? And what's the best route to take? Do you have a personal retirement roadmap? At Centennial Wealth Advisory, we specialize in retirement planning, and we have designed a complimentary retirement roadmap video series that can be customized based on your personal circumstance and preferences. There is no cost and no obligation. Simply go to sin-wealth.com forward slash roadmap and provide us with some basic information that will guide you to your on-demand customized retirement roadmap video. Planning is the first step to succeeding. Plan to retire well. Hey, welcome to this segment on how to minimize your social security taxes. Let's start with some fun facts. Uh, the first one is that in 2024, your COLA, your cost of living adjustment for social security benefit is projected to be 3.2%. Uh, the average social security benefit in 2024 right now is approximately $1,907 a month. That equates to just shy of about $23,000 a year. So how does social security get taxed and how does that work in your overall tax plan, your income plan? You know, that's what we're gonna try to tackle today and give you some ideas about how you might be able to save on some of the um, social security taxes that you could potentially avoid. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to know is the formula or the equation that they use to determine how much of your social security is taxable income. And then there's some charts or um, some thresholds 
that you also want to be aware of. And then you're going to uh, first figure out what your provisional income is and you compare it to the thresholds to see how much of your Social Security is taxable. So in my teaching days, uh, I was a very a visual hands-on learner. And so I made some fake money with my kids' faces on it, uh, called it clunder cash. So I'm going to try for you visual learners out there to just use a quick little prop right here to try to better understand what happens? I'm going to let this uh, represent your Social Security benefit, okay? And so if we use $23,000 um, as our example, um, there is some good news when it comes to Social Security benefits. Uh, the worst case scenario, if we look into that chart right now uh, at the filing status, what you're going to see is that uh, if if you look at if you're married filing jointly, if your provisional income is under $32,000, 0% of your Social Security is subject to tax. If your provisional income is between 32,000 and 44,000, up to 50% of your Social Security is taxable. And then if you're over 44,000, your provisional income, then it's up to 85%. And then if you look down single head of household or qualifying widow, you're gonna see your charts and they all work the same. Okay, so it doesn't matter, you know, find the chart that's applicable to you, but the process is the same. So let's look at the equation for provisional income. What they're going to do is they're going to take 100% of your AGI. That would include uh, wages, pension payments, IRA, 401k distributions, dividends, okay? Then they're going to take 100% of your tax-exempt income. They add that back in. And then they take 50% of your Social Security benefit. And then they compare that provisional income to the chart that you just saw, and that determines how much of your Social Security is taxable. So there is some good news if you look at it. You know, if this represents our Social Security income, there's 15% of your Social Security income that's not going to be taxable. The worst case scenario for anybody is that 85% of their Social Security becomes taxable income. And then it's just added into their ordinary income tax and it'll go to the marginal rate that you are. So uh, once you learn the equation and you look at the thresholds, you might be able to control some of the things like managing your other retirement income sources. <clears throat> Maybe you control how much of that IRA you uh, take a distribution on or maybe you control how much work you're going to do part-time or full-time so that you can stay under your provisional uh, income thresholds and then maybe none of this has to be taxable uh, for Social Security benefit. Uh, the next thing is consider taking your IRA distributions before you start Social Security. You know, if you start early enough and you say, I'm going to live off of my 401k IRA savings, and then I'm going to turn on Social Security, you could be in a position where your Social Security benefit grows. It can cover that income gap that you're trying to cover, and less of it could be taxable. You could start your tax diversification strategy early, where when you're still working, whether you're contributing to a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k, a Roth 403b, 457. What happens there is the Roth distributions, if you do it right, will not have to be counted um, as income in your provisional, uh, your provisional income equation. And so, you know, you can still have the income from your Roth IRA, but it doesn't be, make your Social Security. Um, benefits taxable. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is factor in state taxes. Currently there's 11 states that tax Social Security. And so as long as you don't live in one of those 11 states, then there's no state tax on your Social Security benefit. And finally, if you're just in that situation where you're going to have to pay Social Security taxes, you can either pay them quarterly or you can go to your ssa.gov and you can uh, create a withholding. And those withholding options are going to be 7% 10%, 12%, or 22%. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions on your Social Security strategy, please feel free to reach out anytime. We love to educate. Have a great day.
Ever since I was a young boy, I've been interested in cars and trucks and vehicles. Being around vehicles growing up with my father, he taught me to take really good care of vehicles and they'll last longer and get you where you need to go. Things are going to come up, maintenance is going to happen, and you can choose to investigate what's going on and fix it, or of course, you can always ignore it. I was riding with a friend later in life, probably in my teenage years, and there was a noise that arose and it definitely indicated there was likely an issue that arose from his car. I suggested pulling over and let's take a look to see what's wrong. His solution? Turn up the radio and ignore it. Not just vehicles, but this happens in other forms of life. Think home repairs, that leaky faucet maybe that's been slowly dripping for a while and you'll eventually get to it. Now all of a sudden you got to replace your whole kitchen floor because that leak turned into a much bigger issue. Think personal relationships, friends, families, coworkers, your spouse. Sometimes we can bury our head in the sand and choose not to address or deal with issues that arise or we can work on it and make that relationship even stronger. With retirement and planning and investing, it's no different. Things arise and cross paths in our life. They're gonna make us think about things. We can choose to dive into those and work on them, or we can choose to ignore them. We are gonna start this new series here with Retiring Well and dive into these many different issues and talking about should we fix them or should we ignore them? Because we here at Centennial Wealth Advisory and Retiring Well don't want you to ignore your retirement dreams. They want you to be here to help you plan to retire well. Let's imagine you have $100,000 earmarked for retirement. What do you do next? Well, this is gonna vary for everyone. It, it truly is different for every individual. When we sit down with individuals or couples at Centennial Wealth Advisory, everyone has a story. Everyone's situation is unique, and our job is to figure out based on their situation and what they're trying to accomplish, You know, how can we come alongside them and, and help give them guidance. So when you look at different investments, obviously there's different stocks, exchange traded funds, mutual funds. Uh, you're gonna wanna look at, okay, what is, what is your current age? What's your comfort level with risk? Uh, are you focused primarily on accumulating wealth or is it more driven towards income focus? Exchange traded funds may be uh, a lower cost alternative to mutual funds as we've seen a lot of different money managers shift that way over, over the recent years going more towards these ETFs or exchange traded funds and they'll provide a diversified blend of stocks um, so that you're not going out there trying to pick every individual company to invest in. There's different tools such as fixed indexed annuities. So these are going to be through insurance companies. They're going to help guard you against different stock losses. Um, so you could, for example, track the S&P 500, but they're going to put maybe some type of limit or a cap, uh, let's say of 10% as an example, on what the growth could be. So if the S&P 500 saw a 15% return over the uh, prior 12 months, okay, the maximum in that example that you could earn would be 10%. Um, but they're gonna have the limited access as far as withdrawals, so they might only allow you to access 10% a year as an example. Um, if you chose to add some extra income rider or something like that, then there's gonna be costs involved with that. Um, advisors are paid a commission directly from the insurance company. And, and from our perspective, there's a variety of carriers out there. Uh, through our company, we're independent, so we go and look at a lot of the different insurance companies to see what would be the best uh, fit for what you're trying to accomplish. There's high yield savings accounts, CDs, uh, US Treasury bills are gonna be um, some of the more attractive interest rate offerings right now, uh, but they won't necessarily over a long term outperform inflation. There, there could be um, some long-term uh, restrictions that would come along with that from a liquidity standpoint, depending on what length of time you're committing to those different types of tools. 
Some other ways to consider of what to do with this money, 401k or IRA catch-up contributions. So in 2024, uh, you can uh, put an extra 7,500 into employer plans or $1,000 additional to traditional or Roth IRAs if you're over the age of 55. Roth IRAs have after-tax contribution um, with tax-free growth and future uh, tax-free distributions. So you want to evaluate your tax situation, not, for, not just for today, uh, but look at look at the long term and what does that bring you so if you're as an example say in your in your 40s and and you're looking at retiring sometime in your 60s so you've got a 20 plus year time horizon uh, you want to factor in what you anticipate the uh, the tax implications not again not again just for today but what is what do taxes potentially look like 20 years down the road but and so you want to project out what your income might be uh, obviously we won't know what the tax bracket situation will look like that far in advance. Uh, but it's helpful to start thinking that way versus just strictly from a tax standpoint, how do I keep taxes to a minimum this year? It's a lot bigger uh, issue than, than just this year. So $100,000 in savings you know, may not be enough for you. You may need to work longer or save more. Uh, you, want to, you may want to talk to your employer about sort of your plans and desires and see if there's some opportunities there. People tend to be working longer these days and more retirees seem to be working part-time and, and employers quite honestly need the help. So if it's something where you're, you're near the end of your career but want to continue working and generate some additional income, there's a lot of opportunities out there. But most importantly, mapping out a plan is imperative. That's where we encourage you to give Centennial Wealth Advisory a call or visit our YouTube channel and subscribe to learn a whole lot more about retirement planning. Remember when life was simpler? When things didn't move quite so fast and the world didn't seem so complex? Remember that? We do. And as the world around us has continued to speed up, becoming more complicated and still a bit uncertain, we have managed to keep things simple, providing sound, easy to understand financial advice and customized roadmaps for the road ahead from tax reduction strategies, investment advice, and guaranteed retirement income you cannot outlive, backed by the claims paying ability of insurance companies. We can be your single point of contact, a single call, a voice you recognize well, and a partner who can be by your side for the entire journey. We can't stop the world around us, but we can help ensure you're prepared for what's to come. To schedule a no-obligation meeting, simply contact us today. Make the most of Social Security. Although Social Security isn't designed to cover all of your income needs, it's an important part of the retirement puzzle. Download our free booklet on the Social Security decisions at sin-wealth.com and learn how to optimize Social Security for your situation. Why timing is so important when it comes to your benefits. Ways to supplement your Social Security and more. There is no cost and no obligation. Simply go to sin-wealth.com, scroll down and click the download link to get your free booklet on the Social Security Decisions. Retiring early. Maybe a dream for some, but not so much for others. Um, you know, and retiring early may mean different things to different people. But in conceptual stuff, I want to talk about it today and, and that and kind of maybe the ideas behind that. And, and think of this, you know, for some folks in their mind, they're never going to retire. You know, whether that's financially, whether that's they just love their job so much, or they just can't imagine their life without having that time or that, that fulfillment of having that working. You know, over your lifetime, usually your career, your employment kind of becomes part of you, right? I mean, you spend, the, in many cases, you spend a lot of time at the office or at the, your job or whatever it is that you're doing. If you're an entrepreneur, you're probably spending most of your life building this business. So having that, stepping away from that can be a big thing. So from a retiring early standpoint, you know, the, the general, you know, full retirement age for a lot of folks with, you know, Social Security is somewhere between 65 and 67 right now for most folks. Um, so retiring early would be 
retiring prior to that timeline. I think any more, at least when I hear people talk when they come in the office, to them retiring early is even pre-62. You know, for most folks, you know, drawing early Social Security benefits, you can start at 62. So retiring early would even be before that. Maybe it's sometime in your 50s or even, heck, even sooner, right? So I've talked to some young people recently and they're like, you know, I, I hope to retire at 50 or I can't imagine working past 55. So for you out there, if you're in this boat and you haven't retired yet and you're thinking of this is, what does that look like? What would that look like? And would that be attractive to you to retire early? So then we say, if the answer is yes, I'd like to, then let's set forth a plan to do that. There's many things that have to come into place when you're thinking of retiring early. So A, where is income gonna come from, right? You know, there, there's expenses that happen out there in the world. You gotta eat, you gotta probably have some electricity on at the house, you gotta have a place to live, uh, uh, you know, all these sort of things. So what is that household budget and where is the income gonna come from to do that? You probably wanna factor in some, some fun money, some extras, because now that you're hopefully retiring young and healthy, you're gonna wanna go do things and travel. And, you know, whatever is meaningful to you to do that. So factor that in as well. How are you gonna create that income? Is it through retirement savings? Is it through access to maybe a pension? Um, is there other investments that you have like rental properties or something like that that are gonna spit off some form of income for you? So looking to see making sure those, those that income is greater than the expenses coming in, right? Healthcare is another thing out there. What does that look like early? You know, once we get to 65 and older, most of us have qualified for Medicare and can get on that and, and those were benefits. But pre-65, what does that look like? Are you going on the marketplace to get insurance? Are you able to get it through maybe retirement benefits from your current employer? Uh, something along those lines. So making sure you have a strong plan from a healthcare perspective as well, because that's a big expense or can be a big expense and can be something maybe you're not used to paying if you've had the benefits of having it through your employer before and now all of a sudden you're tasked with having that yourself. Taxes. You know, what form of income is coming in and do I have accessibility to that money? Am I gonna get a tax penalty? As an example, if I'm retiring before 59 and a half and I have money in IRAs, I'm gonna pay a 10% early withdrawal penalty likely on that money if I start taking it out prior to 59 and a half. So there's some different rules with 401ks, 403bs, depending upon how you leave and all that sort of stuff that may give you access a little bit sooner. But again, looking at from a tax, a tax penalty and accessibility to that money is gonna play a role in, in maybe that plan and all of that, right? So in a nutshell here, retiring early may be a dream for some and it may not be for others, but if it is a dream for you, the most important thing you can do is set out a plan of how to accomplish that and what are these check marks you have to do to get to that point to achieving that reality of retiring early. Oftentimes when we sit down with folks that have done a nice job saving and they've been, then they have this dream, it's not as far off as some thinks. So having that, you know, sitting down and walking through that, and maybe there's a few adjustments you can make early on to better that situation, and that way you can get there and realize those aspirations that you have. If this is something you'd like to walk through with one, our team of advisors here in Traverse City, Gaylord, Potosti, or Cadillac offices, we'd love to sit down with you for a no cost, no obligations visit to map out this plan so you can plan to retire well and plan to retire early.